know what your tile is and know what your substrate is and know what the thin set you need to use. Dry set mortar, commonly referred to as thin set. What kind of thin set you should use for what kind of surface and what kind of tile. There's two main types. There's modified and then there's unmodified. Well, unmodified thin set uh, and its simplest terms is just basically sand and pop and cement with a bunch of other components in it, but it's, it's, it's basically that. Modified thin set, it has the sand, the Portland cement, and polymers in it. The polymers in the mortar are to promote better curing, better adhesion, and, and help with the curing process. So the crystals, as they grow in the mortar, and that's what, what mortars do, is they grow crystals and they intertwine and they penetrate into the surfaces and they create a bond. The polymer modified thin sets are designed to retain moisture to help that uh, happen better. Plus they add an adhesive quality to the thin set. An unmodified mortar just uh, only depends on the crystals growing to penetrate into the, into the substrate. So why does that make a difference? Well, depending on the substrate you're going over and the tile you're going over, you may need a, a, a mortar with a higher um, adhesive quality than just a regular thin set mortar. So where do you use an unmodified mortar? Well, unmodified mortar almost completely disappeared uh, in its use until Schluter came along and they created and they had their un, uh, uncoupling membranes and their and then and the waterproofy sheet membranes that required an unmodified mortar because tile was set between impervious substrates and the, and the, and the modified mortars weren't drying out. Now there's been a development since that actually uh, was the case because now there's been uh, uh, improvement in mortars well, that's not so much of, uh, of a problem anymore. If you're looking to use a mortar and you uh, to, to buy a particular mortar and you and and you get confused when you go in the store, it says it'll say the mortar to be used with on plywood, used to for ceramic tile, for porcelain tile, and uh, to list a bunch of the substrates that you can use. If you mix it with this or mix it with that, if you you're looking for an unmodified mortar because that's what you want to use and that's what you've been told to use, you're going to look for this standard on the bag. It's going to say ANSI A118.1. That's an unmodified mortar. And it actually has very limited uses. Most people will use a modified mortar. Now, modified mortars uh, are three basic standards. There's A118.4, which is the lowest tier. A118.11 which is actually EGP ply, uh, pl uh, mortar, exterior grade plywood, which is a better polymer modified mortar that will adhere to plywood if you need to install a membrane or if, even if you're going to install tile directly to plywood, you have to use the A118.11 mortar. And don't get confused with A118.1, which is unmodified. If you use an A118.4, mortar on plywood it'll stick to the tile but it won't stick to the plywood when you go into a store and you're looking for a thin set and you don't know which one to use just remember 0.4 is not good for plywood and 0.11 and 0.15 are good for plywood and I'll always say on the bag it'll always say meets or exceeds uh ANSI A118.4 and then if it's uh, if it's a better it'll say Meets or exceeds A and C A one one eight point four and A one one eight point one one. So a thin set that that's a that's an A one one eight point one five, for example, will also be point one one and point four. Why you need different thin sets anyway? Well, it depends on the substrate you're going over. If you're going to install, say, a ceramic tile on a concrete floor, then you could probably use an unmodified uh, thin set directly on the concrete floor and it'll stick to both because the concrete is very porous, the ceramic tile is porous and and, and the crystals can grow and and, um, and penetrate into both surfaces and you get a great, great bond. Uh, it will have no flexibility, but you'll get a great bond. 
Another thing you would pro you would use uh, an unmodified thin set for would be if you've got a concrete floor and you want to install, say, Schluter Dietra. You can use an unmodified uh, thin set to install your uncoupling membrane to the concrete floor and you get a very good bond. An unmodified mortar has very limited uses. If you're going to be using an unmodified mortar, then be sure that that's exactly what you need. Mortars that you're going to, probably going to be using for most installations are going to be modified. The glue that holds your project together is a thin set mortar. So if you go cheap on that, where a better mortar would hold, maybe a cheaper mortar won't. The three standards for modified mortars are ANSI A118.4, A118.11, and A118.15. The top is a 0.15. The bottom is the um, 0.4. If you're installing a tile on a cement board, you want to use a modified mortar, and especially if it's porcelain tile. How, how do you tell the difference between a ceramic and a porcelain tile? Well, for one, uh, porcelain is denser and it's less absorbent. Ceramic is uh, softer and it's more absorbent. The tiles uh, are categorized by the amount of water they absorb. So a, a porcelain tile absorbs very little water. So you need a very good um, thin set to be able to adhere to it. A ceramic tile will absorb a lot more water, so a lower grade thin set will adhere to it very well. It's about those crystals intertwining and growing and penetrating into in, into the into the surface. That's how it bonds. If you've got something that's very dense, it's harder for the crystals to grow in there. So you need a a, a more adhesive quality to the thin set to get a good bond. If you're using a, if you're installing a ceramic tile, like say a, a subway tile, a ceramic subway tile, you could use a lower grade thin set. If you're installing a porcelain tile, you probably want to go to a higher grade thin set. We have the A118.4, which is a modified thin set, but it's the lowest grade thin set. If you're going to install uh, a tile or a membrane on a plywood subsurface, then you can't use the A118.4. That is not designed to adhere to plywood. You have to step up to the ANSI A118.11 or better which uh, actually the ANSI A118.11 is actually EGP, which means exterior grade plywood. So it's designed to adhere to exterior grade plywood. You could go up to the ANSI A118.15. In my opinion, it's better to always use a better grade of, uh, of thin set, a better grade of thin set, so you know you've got a, you've got a very good bond. Now, the point one one, as I said, is for uh, to be used over... Uh, the minimum standard that you can use over plywood that will adhere to plywood. And then you've got the, the 0.15. The one, uh, 0.15 is referred to as an improved polymer modified uh, mortar. What does that mean? Yeah, improved, it's better. So you can use that also over plywood. Another thing polymers add to thin set, it gives it flexibility. If you've got an unmodified mortar, it's there is no flexibility. It's just a rigid uh, material. If you've got a polymer, and depending on the type and kind and quantity of polymer, it adds flexibility and adhesive quality. So why would you need a 0.15 mortar? Glass tile is a very difficult uh, material to bond to. So you need a really good uh, thin set mortar to bond to that. So you would use a 0.15, an ANSI A118.15 mortar. you got to be certain that that is actually good for the glass tile. So know, for example, a Schluter All Set, which is an ANSI A11.15 thin set, they do not recommend that for glass tile. But if you get like Tech Superflex, that is actually something that will be commonly used to install glass tile. They're both 1.15 uh, mortars but one is recommended and the other one is not. So a 0.15 has a better adhesive quality and will stick to, to usually glass. They also make thin set mortars that are specifically made for glass. The, uh, the polymers in the thin set add uh, flexibility and more adhesive quality to it. The more difficult the, the substrate is to adhere to, the better quality mortar you need. 
beyond the standards of A118.1, 0.4, 0.11, and 0.15, there are additional qualities that can be added to the thin set to make it useful for other types of setting situations. For example, if you get a, a mortar that has a T at the end, so let's go say it's got an A118.15T thin set. That means the thin set is a no sag thin set. The T stands for thixotropic, which means that it doesn't sag, it doesn't, it, it, it'll hold the tile up or it'll keep, help, help keep it from sliding down the wall if it's on a vertical surface. If you're going to be installing a large format tile, which today most tiles are, are pretty big, the, the most common size tile is a 12 by 24. So if you're going to be using a large format tile, and just quickly, the definition of a large format tile is any tile that has any ceramic or porcelain tile that has one side longer than 15 inches. A lot of manufacturers will make thin sets which have a T, which is, a, uh, which is at the end, which is a no sag thin set. And the properties on those mortars also allows for hold larger, heavier tiles better so that, that they don't sag. You can use a large format tile mortar. You can also use it for a smaller tile. But you probably don't want to use a regular mortar for a large tile. It'll stick to it, but it's, it's probably better if you use thin set mortar designed for a larger tile. And another thing about a regular mortar and an LFT mortar, the bond coat on an LFT mortar can be thicker than that on a regular mortar. So if you've got a regular thin set mortar, you can only go so deep they all vary, but they're usually within like a quarter inch, maybe maybe three eighths thickness that you can use a, uh, a thin set mortar before it starts to lose its ability to hold its shape and it, it shrink and create problems. So if you use so typically with a large tile, you're going to use a bigger trowel with a thicker bond coat. So you want to use a large format tile mortar. They refer to as LFT or LHT large format tiles or large and heavy tiles, those can have thicker bond coats. Some of them go up, can go up to almost three quarters of an inch. I wouldn't push it that far, but you know, you gotta be very careful when you're picking your mortar to make sure that you, that you um, use the right one. So they can you have, have thicker bond coats and they won't shrink and sag. So the T is for no sag, and then they've got E. Like if you find an E at the end. And you can also have, you can have a thin set that's got T and E. So T means no sag and E means extended uh, open time. You look on the bag and it's got, it can have a T or it can have an E. Or it can have an F, which is for fast setting. If you look on the bag, it's going to have a pot life and an open time. The pot life can vary greatly depending on the model that you're using. So what does pot life mean? You mix up the thin set and you start using it. The pot life is the amount of time that will remain good in your bucket. Uh, some will be an hour, some will be up to four hours of, of pot life, and anywhere in between. And your conditions and temperature will affect the pot life. So if, you've got, if you're in a, a, working in an area where it's, where it's 50 degrees and, and it's damp, you're gonna get a, a, a very good pot life. If you're working in a, in a hot area where it's 100 degrees and it's very dry, pot life's gonna be reduced. Same for open time. Open time is once you spread the thin set and you and you ready to install your tile. The open time is the amount of time that that thin set will remain tacky and you can install a tile. Thin sets are designed to have very long open times and some uh, don't have a, a very long open time. And again, ambient temperature and conditions will affect the open time. If you've spread some thin set and you've gone a long way and you're starting to just place your tile, make sure that the thin set is still good. So if it's skimmed over, it can happen very easily, especially if you've got like a fan blowing or it's very warm. What does that mean? So if you touch the thin set, if you touch the thin set and nothing transfers to your finger, then that has skimmed over and is no good. You gotta remove it and start over and spread some more thin set. If you touch it and it transfers to your finger, then it's still good. They have specialty mortars. Um, they will all adhere to one of these standards but you can get lightweight thin sets, and those are those will have, depending on how they're ma they're made, will have better open times, better pot life, non-sag uh, properties. 
So there's a, there's a million different kinds of things that say you can you can get, but they all adhere to one of those standards. Check the standard and the user for the appropriate tile and substrate. Never cheap out on thin set. It's always better to use a, a higher quality thin set. So another thing about these thin sets is also how you mix them. Some are very sensitive to the amount of water and the mixing time and the slake time and then the remix time and some are not quite as sensitive. So always read the bag. Uh, you might get a, a thin set that says mix it for um, three minutes and then let it slake for 10 minutes and then let it then remix it for another 30 seconds or a minute or two minutes. To achieve the properties that are designed in that thin set, you should mix it the way it describes in the bag. There are some thin sets that you, you mix and you don't let them slake and you use them right away. They all have one thing in common that you should never do. If you're using a thin set and it starts to get stiff, never add water to make it smoother and softer and creamier. You can remix it to, 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 to loosen up a bit, but don't add any water to it. After the thin set has slaked, if it's one of those that, that have slake time, do not ever add water to it in any way. So what does this slaking thing mean? Slaking means that so, okay, so you mix your thin set and you get all the powder of the, of the product all wet and it's all mixed in and there's no dry spots. And then you let it sit, I mean slick. What does that do? So what happens is that the water penetrates into the molecules and it, and it uh, activates all the chemistry in the bag. You get all the components of all the thin set is all activated. Then what you need to do is remix it so you get a good mix, breaking them up and you make them all into mix with each other so that the product works properly. If a bag of mortar says it needs to slake, make sure you slake it. If you get a bag of, of mortar, mix it, you don't mix it for quite enough time and then you just start using it, you're going to find that that mortar gets you know stiff really quick because it hasn't had the proper mixing and the proper slaking. And it, it, and it gets stiff pretty quick. If you get that same mortar, you mix it to the proper amount of time and you let it slake the proper amount of time and then you remix it, you're going to find it works much better and it will have the properties that it says it has. So a lot of times people complain about a mortar that doesn't work properly. It's not because uh, it doesn't work properly. It's because they haven't mixed it according to the direction. So that's another important thing. The point of this video is to make sure you use the proper thin set for the substrate and the tile that you're installing. If you use an unmodified thin set to install a tile or an uncoupling membrane to apply with subfloor, you're gonna have a problem. If you use a 118.4 thin set to install your tile directly to plywood, but if you do that, the thin set will stick to your tile, but it won't stick to the plywood. If you use an A118.4 mortar to install an uncoupling membrane to apply with subfloor, thin set will stick to the membrane, but it won't stick to the plywood. You have to use an A118.11 or better thin set. The bag always has the standard. Know what your tile is and know what your substrate is and know what the thin set you need to use to make the two work together. Okay, so I got several types of mortar here, and I'm going to show you that they all have the standard on the bag somewhere. Is it here? On this one here? Full light? Where is it on the bag here? I don't see it. It's on here. So, there it is. It's on there as well. There's another one here, this has it on the bag, also right there, and this one right there. So we've got one, two, three, four, eight. so they all have the standard on the bag. If you do that and you mix it according to proper mixing directions, you're going to get the pot life, you're going to get the open time, and you're going to get the consistency that the mortar is supposed to have.
Motors also come in gray and white. They're exactly the same. There's no difference. It's the same standard. It's just, just the color. The white will always cost a little bit more than the gray. There are some materials that you have to use white. Like, for example, if you're installing, installing a natural stone, you always want stone. You always want to use a white mortar. If you're installing glass, you always want to use a white mortar. The more chemistry in a bag, the more advanced it is, the more it's going to cost. Glue that holds everything together is the thin set. So you always want to get a good quality mortar to install.